serve and grow is what you can expect at the house of reconciliation leadership community education wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success family and faith is a core value for the house of reconciliation working to help people find their purpose want to make an impact in the kingdom ready to tap into your future meet us at the house sundays with pastor reginald campbell www.houseofreconciliation.org i am the seed that grows and advances the kingdom for soul winning this word bread of life that i received today it's not only for me, but to be shared with others that they may grow in Christ as well as myself for the purpose of successful living. Now just take a moment because there's some things that I'm going to orchestrate as we go forward. Um, just say this to me, say this with me uh, unto the Lord. Lord, I came here. To grow. to grow naturally, naturally. And, spiritually. and spiritually. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to welcome all of you in. We're here at the Mother Church, the Greenwood campus at 210 Pansy Road, Hodges, South Carolina. We thank God for all of you that have watched and viewed the first service that was in Greenville, 1427 Sweet E Lawrence Road. We thank God for the Greenville campus and, of course, to our virtual campus as well as our national campus and international campus. For those who are following us in New York and Connecticut and Indiana and Florida and California, we do thank, in Oklahoma, we do thank God for you and for those numbers that are growing in the upstate. I purpose not to waste your time this morning. I know many of you want to watch the football games and some people want to get their barbecue and go finish their school shopping for the children. So I'm, I'm not going to keep you long but our core theme I think going into the third of the fourth year has been connect serve and grow and for the month of August we have been talking about without risk there's no reward and so I asked the Lord what is it that I need to say to your people. And the concept that God dropped in my spirit was people are still stuck. And so I came up with this subject, you stuck again, bruh, sis, you stuck again. So all that's been said, all that's been taught, many times we haven't implemented. We heard it, we smelt it, but we didn't eat it. And so what we need to do as we progress through this month of transition, because the number eight means new beginning, a new beginning cannot take place without a new transition. Many people want to get to the transformation and they have not prepared themselves. Deke, if you can just turn me down just a little bit. Have not prepared themselves for the transition. We're almost there. All right. So you're still stuck. You have the tools, especially the monitors. You have the tools, but you've never put anything into action. You have notes, but we don't go back and visit those notes because we're looking for something immediate when sometime the next level is delayed. Not that God doesn't want us to have it, but we're not properly prepared for it. So it says you stuck again. And so what I want to share with you this morning is two things. Number one, there's a target on your back. If you call yourself a believer, a child of God, in development, born again, you have a target on your back. 
But what we don't recognize is that we have a shield. So human nature makes me think I'm all out here by myself. So then I use my nature to fight a spiritual battle. I use my mind to fight a spiritual battle. And the Bible says, my brothers and sisters, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So you think a person's mad at you and it really the spirit in them is mad, is mad at the spirit of the believer and you take it personal. And here's what God looks at for you and I. We didn't know that we we're being graded on every test. What your job said, what your family member said, what the doctor said, we are being graded. And, and so we think there's no levels of accountability. There are levels of accountability. God looks at you and I to see how we handle things. To see if we're going to react with our emotions. To see if we're going to use the book of reference. Do you know what that book is? The Bible. I don't want to see a show of hands, but how many people read the Bible multiple times a week? The Bible has to be read more than funerals. And more than when mama is sick. See, many people think they know God but have no relationship with God. And that relationship starts with the word of God. Not my situation. Not my feelings, not my emotions. So we don't realize we're being graded. So John, the 16th chapter, verse 18 through 22, says to us, O earth, cover not thou my blood, because there's some things that happen to you and I that we literally feel like it's going to tear us apart. He says, and let my cry have no place. You ever felt that you were crying and nobody, nobody could understand why you were crying and in your moment and the person that you're close to don't understand, your family don't understand, and and you just, you're just broken. He says, also now, behold, this is when you do have a right as a person to have an emotional moment. Now, for some of my emotional people, you all write that down. But the problem is you stay there too long. Job wrote, and now behold, my witness. Have y'all ever heard that the angels write down things about us? We do get report cards. So then he says, my witness is in heaven. And I have a record. It's on high. It's not held by the Democrats. It's not held by the Republicans. It's not held in the opinions of other people is hell according to the word of God. And that's where we're lacking because we have issues in our body, we have issues on our job, we have all these things, but where is God? Where is that devotional time?
where is that meditation time? What we seek is another person's opinion and not the revelation of the word. So he says, my record's on high. My friends scorn me. The same people you confide in. Mm, she gonna lose her job. I didn't like her knowing. She a mean old supervisor. I don't like her to be the lead. If somebody asks you to be the lead, no, that's okay. I don't want to be the lead. <laughs> you can't be the lead still in the bathroom 15 minutes after break with everybody else. You can't be the lead and be the worst example in the church. Because no matter how well you dress, no matter what you say, nobody pays you any attention. You can have the biggest, longest title in the world. What you do goes farther than what you say. So many people are not using the shield of God. Because there are three things that keep your shield up. Anybody from the Greenville remember what they are? Consistency, continuity, and faithfulness. This keeps your shield up. God has no problem with you crying. God has no problem with your emotions. God has a problem with your response to the situation. Does this make sense? Now, I'm just going to deal with three things, and we're going to be out of here. Here is what the believer does not get and have really been taught. Pressure and stress is important to our development. Why is that? You don't know how much you can take until you take something. A weight capacity has to go through a prerequisite test to see how much pressure it can take. The brakes on the vehicle, the setting the air pressure, all of that has to be tested for you to have a bigger, bigger footprint and a bigger blessing. You have to take greater tests. Stress and pressure is important to our development. They are there to stretch us for increase in two things. Sustainability and profitability. I don't understand why there is this belief that the people of God are supposed to suffer. I'm saved if I'm suffering. I'm saved if I'm poor. I'm saved if I'm struggling. And here is their scripture. Oh, the Bible says it's better for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man get in. But see, you don't understand the, term, the de determination of that scripture. The reason a rich man struggles to get in is because he won't buy. He won't fit the capacity of the needle. So there are people who teach that you ain't supposed to have nothing. And here's what I say to you that teach that. Then don't ever lift another offering. Because they want your money. How can they want more and more money every time, every time, more and more money. But they tell you to stay poor. They can drive a $150,000 car, but you still coming in a wagon and a buggy. Your roof still leaking. I measure people, leaders, not how much you wear, but how much you put in. Do you put back in the house of the Lord? The 
house of the Lord isn't designed for what all you can take. You looking like a Mississippi pimp and the church and had a new toilet in 60 years. The AC don't work. You still cool in the church with church wonder fans and have the best Jesus in the world. And so many people need to shed this mindset of poverty. The Bible says, come on somebody, that I wish you be blessed as well as your soul. I wish you prosper as well. So why y'all always crying broke? Somebody look up that scripture, this Bible class. To be in good health and prosper. Come on, tell me so I can tell somebody. Good health. Tell somebody, put that other piece of chicken down. Put that slice of cake back. The Lord expects for you to profit. Why would you serve a great God if you're the poorest person in your neighborhood? Because you can't handle being successful. Well, I don't want a broke God. Yeah. Third John 1 and 2 says what? So you need to have something on earth. Your testimony shouldn't be all the time about your light bill and the water bill due. And Lord, can y'all help me make my car payment? That's why a lot of churches had to cut out testimony service. It was never nothing about Jesus. My dog ran away. You guys seen Muffy? Am I making sense? Here is what I want to say. Everybody want to be blessed, raise your hand. Those are part of the virtual campus. Now, I'm going to share something with you. The Bible says that the Lord will bless your hands. Somebody look that up real quick. Here is what I want to teach you why most people are stuck. First of all, John 16, 18 through 21. While you're looking up the other one, O earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. Also now, behold, I have a witness in heaven and my records on high. I'll say this to you when you, so you can let me know when you find the scripture. The truth don't take a side. I can tell when a person has a short, carnal mind. Every time you tell them the truth, they take it personally. I'm not speaking to you. I'm speaking to the situation. And most of the time, people are not in control of the situation because their emotions are running rampant. Am I making sense? So if you want to be blessed, here's number two. God can't water what we haven't planted. There are many people going today and getting ready to walk in, and they want to hear about miracles. Miracles are one-time events. Manna from heaven was a one-time event. I might be wrong, but is there anywhere else in the Bible that Jesus turned water into wine? It was when, and I might be wrong, but he said that he would lay his life down and no man can take it and he'd pick it up and he said on the third day I will what? Has anybody else rose on the? He said let there be light, right? Mm -hmm. Has anybody else cut the light off? 
miracle, a one-time event. And there are people that are going to pack into droves today into a place looking for a one-time event. God cannot water what we haven't planted. And I'll give it to you like this. I used to wonder why was it in the Bible that it said that the children of Israel went over to the promised land and they brought back fruit and they consumed the fruit. And for decades, I couldn't understand why was that important in the Bible. They ate the fruit but never planted the seed. And the things they wanted, they were not prepared for it. And the number one thing lacking was faith, continuity, and consistency. So no matter what God did, they weren't ready for it. So my brothers and sisters, as we move toward the middle of this month, are you prepared and ready for the next move of God? See, it's one thing to sing and shout and glorify God, and we all should. But it's another thing to actually prepare for something. I had a young man come to me, and he said, Mr. Campbell, I said, yes. He says, his, his father was in finances, and his father helped me, and, and um, he says, I need you to help me. He says, I'm about to turn 18, and I need to understand what is passive income. What is investments? I said, if you find five to seven stocks now and you're 18 and you're investing them, however, $300, $400, and put $50 a month in as you go to school and you don't take the dividends, by the time you get 40, you may have five, six million dollars. The problem is you want to start saving today and be rich tomorrow. You want to put a penny in and expect a dollar. So we had a conversation. He says, do you mind if I come back and just talk to you? I said, no problem. Anytime you see my vehicle, stop on by. He said, because I want to be prepared. See, people who prepare are not the people that's always emotional. You shouting over a dollar, and if you'd have planted it, it would have been a hundred dollars. So you have spunt the dollar. Now you back in church hoping somebody give you to go do the when if you would have planted something. The biggest cry I hear from seniors is I don't have enough to live. And God, and the, and the, we, the United States give everybody 50 years to work in the workforce. So everything in your life was an emergency. Give you a quick story. This is number three. More people are focused on the sound of the moment <coughs> rather than the substance of the future. And I think that's significant. I'll say it again. More people are focused on the sound of the moment rather than the substance of the future. Well, what are you saying? Real quick story. Magic Johnson. Recently, an article came out about Magic Johnson, and I thought it was profound. Do I need to give y'all number three again, or you have it? Yeah. All right, let me go back up here. Because they don't need me telling you a story, and we don't understand it. Let's see, number three. Yes, number three. More people are focused on the sound of the moment. rather than the substance of the future. More people are focused. And I'll ask you, what do you focus on? Your present is your toolbox. 
everything in your present should be built in your future. I don't care what happened before. You can stop it from happening again because you should have power and control over your life now. Your job laid you off the last time. What have you done between the last layoff and the upcoming layoff? Here is what I bank on every day. That the Lord said before one jot, a tilt of my word fell. Heaven and earth will pass away. I wake up every day as an entrepreneur saying, Lord, I need you to help me today. There's something I need to learn that will help me. If it can't help me today, it'll help me in my future. Many people only read books because they're forced to. They don't read books to gain future knowledge. So when they get to those situations, they have a reference. Am I making sense? If you don't read ahead, how can you get ahead? So here's what it says. Most people are focused on the sound of the moment. Oh, they're having a good time. My friends are going here. My friends are taking a trip. My friends are doing this. Oh, my boys are doing this. We're going here. We're going there. That's the sound of the moment rather than the substance of the future. So this is what Magic Johnson said in an article. When you grow up broke, parents, we have children and have no future for them. How can you have a future for your children and you don't have a future for yourself? So you want to wait till you're 65 to get in the broke line. Now this is real talk. God's searching for real people who have real issues, looking for a real God who has real solution. This is why when I ask God, what, what do I say? I have some material. He said, you still stuck? Tell the people that I said, you still stuck. Because someone has come along and told you what you need to do, but because it didn't agree with your emotion, you didn't do it. And the Bible says you can't take new wine and put it over. So your old house is not going to fit your new bride. Your old house is not going to fit your new husband. And what God's not going to let you do is drag down his best to your level. God expects for you to raise your level to meet his best. You won't read, you won't get recertified, you won't take certain classes, but the jobs that you want, all of them have stipulations that need to be met. I wish somebody talked to me. You have the experience, but don't have the credentials. And you asking God for a miracle. Had you read beforehand, I guess a good word would be reading it forward. Then when the bell rung, you would be like the five that was wise. Instead, you with the five jackass group. Yes, I said it. You, you with the slow group. The Bible called them the five foolish. Well, we need to do I just got enough for the day. And the five wise could wait it out because they had reserves and coffers and they had stuff stored up. So if the bridegroom was late, they were still ready. So I'll go back and this hit a rock. What have you done since the last time you were laid off? What have you invested in yourself? 
We spend all this time telling people about our situation and never about our preparation. We spend all this time talking about what they said. Some people say it's going to happen September the 18th. Some say we're going to be here to October. Now, mind you, ain't nobody said nothing to me. So whoever in this situation, don't be rolling your eyes at me. Get mad at God. So God says, you're still stuck. What are you doing? What are you preparing now? He said, oh, slugger, go look at the ant. Remember, that's in the Bible. Because the ant was storing up for the winter in the summer. Oh, we got two little paychecks. Right at the cliff. Come on. So here's what magic, y'all not looking so well. I hope. I'm going to probably be three minutes, but I'm going to stand up because they're not looking so well. I, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's going on. Maybe they got chewing gum stuck in their gum or something. Ain't nobody looking well. Here's what Magic Johnson said. When you grow up broke, fathers and mothers, you must be careful of the tone that you set with your children. There's some that cry too poor and there's some that spoil theirs. You got to find the middle of the road. You shouldn't be, oh, I got to pay for it. Or you shouldn't be, well, I ain't got no money. You better get a job. Better fix what you're going to do. You need to be in the middle of the road. Some things you need to share with your children. Sometimes you need to give to your children. And sometimes you need to teach your children how to fish. I've never given my grandchildren money without telling them about saving Because if, if you give it to them and, run to, and they run to the store, some of y'all go to the store five, six times a week. And then holler, I ain't got no money. I know why. They got a $300,000 building and you got a 600 square foot hood. I had to stand up because I, I need to whistle. I think that hit below the belt. I, Magic Johnson said, when you grow up broke, you take the money. Because you've never been taught what money can do. He said, but I regret not taking the Nike offer, which would have yielded me $5.2 billion. That's called front load money. That's called taking it off your top of your gross and putting it to the side and allowing it to go to work. And when it reaches a certain level, you put 30% back and you put the other one in a high yield and you take it to a next level and you don't touch it. This is the great Magic Johnson who paid $240 million to $280 million to only own, I think it's 4%, 3 to 4% of the Washington Commanders. That's how much it cost them to own because there were tears. Now, the one that had 7%, I think they wind up paying $780 million. Now, why is this relevant? Hack Magic taken to Nike stock, he could have had $5.2 billion and that one investment and he could have been the principal of the Washington Nationals, Washington Commanders. But because of his environment and because of his culture, it was a problem. Take the money. Hold it tight in your hand. Put it in a jar in the yard. Put it under your bed. 
He said, I regret not taking the stock. And so he's a three or four percent owner of the Washington Commanders. And I looked it up. It was four hundred and two hundred and forty million or two hundred and eighty million just to own three or four percent. And if he would have invested in the future back then, and I don't blame him. I question all of our environments. What good is the Bible if it only teaches you how to survive today? What good is the Bible if it doesn't say a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's grandchildren? Oh, I forgot. We like the preachers that just preach about how the devil been whooping us and how hard it's been and singing we shall overcome when how many people dead and we still ain't overcome You still stuck, bro? You still stuck, sis? You still stuck on eighth grade knowledge? You still in your feelings? You still stuck with the motto, I work hard, I work hard. Okay. 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 All right. Keep eating the chicken backs. He don't know what that is. You know what it is? Keep eating the chicken feet. That's the point. I'm not going to work hard just to survive for the day. If you don't plant, every one of you has a gift. Every one of you out there has a gift. The problem is you value what somebody else has and they spent time preparing for their gift and building their gift. I'll tell you, just like I said uh, in Greenville, I played sax for 27 years. I have a grandson and I don't know if he's musically inclined, but I'm en route to buy myself a baritone saxophone and I'm gonna play and I know that's gonna excite him but I'm also prepared to buy him a soprano saxophone, which is small. I want to set a tone for him. Because he may be better than me. And music opens your mind. It expands your borders. Most people who are in music are very good in math. I said math. Not all. What are you doing to set the tone for your family? Complaining about your job? Can't stay on the job? Always working a low-end job, low skills? Surviving? How can your children be great when you never showed them what greatness was. How? How can you expand their mind when your mind's still closed? How can you tell them to go to school and you don't understand anything about collegiate pressure in college? All the drugs, all the groupies, all the dysfunction, all the time it's going to take to study. What can you tell them? You're going out there. 
you're sending them to the wolves. Because you know what befails most generation? Lack of preparation, but also no examples. God bless you. I'll see you soon.